Uh, hello viewers, welcome to my channel. And uh, today's topic is uterine polyps. But before starting, I would like to request you to like, subscribe, and share this video to support this channel. And if you need more information, you can visit our website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. Uh, alternatively, you can click the link in the description here to visit that website. Now, today's topic is uh, uh, uterine polyps. So uterine polyps are the growths attached to the inner wall of the uterus that extend into the uterine cavity. And uh, the overgrowth of the cells in the lining of the uterus, which is known as uh, endometrium, and leads to the formation of the uterine polyps, you know, which are also known as endometrial polyps. And uh, these polyps are usually non-cancerous, uh, you know, which means they are benign, you know. Uh, although some can be cancerous and can eventually turn into the cancerous uh, polyps, you know, which is known as pre-cancerous polyps. And uh, the uterine polyps range in size uh, from the few millimeters uh, to several millimeters, centimeters, you know, and uh, like the size of the golf ball, you know, or the larger, you know. And uh, they attach uh, to the uterine wall uh, by a large base or a like uh, a thin stalk you know and you can have one or many polyps and uh, they usually stay uh, con like uh, uh, contained within your uterus you know and uh, but occasionally they slip down uh, through the opening of the uterus which is known as cervix you know into the vagina and the uterine polyps most often occur in the women who are going through the uh, have uh, uh, completed menopause you know and uh, although younger women can get them too you know the next thing is what are the symptoms of the uh, uterine polyps? Well, the signs and the symptoms of the uterine polyps uh, include uh, like irregular menstrual bleeding and uh, bleeding between the menstrual periods and the vaginal bleeding after the menopause and the infertility. So these are the main signs and the symptoms uh, and uh, you should seek the medical advice if the vaginal bleeding after the menopause uh, uh, happens, bleeding between the uh, periods happens and the irregular menstrual periods. So in that case, you should consult your doctor, you know. The next thing is what are the causes, you know. Uh, well, uh, the hormonal factors appear an important role in the development of the polyps. And uh, uh, the uterine polyps are uh, estrogen sensitive, so which means that they grow in response to the uh, like, uh, circulating estrogen. And uh, the risk factors uh, uh, include like uh, uh, being uh, uh, perimenopausal or the postmenopausal, you know, uh, having high blood pressure, which is known as the hypertension and uh, being obese and uh, taking the like uh, uh, drug therapy for the breast cancer so in that case you are more likely to develop the uh, uterine polyps uh, you know the uterine polyps um, might be associated with the infertility and if you have the uterine polyps and you are unable to have uh, children uh, uh, removal of the polyps might allow you to become pregnant uh, but the data are inclusive so we don't know the right figures you know uh, now the next thing is uh, how your doctor will diagnose that uh, you have the polyps so if your doctor suspects that you have the uterine polyps uh, he or she might perform uh, the tests like trans vaginal ultrasound you know and uh, maybe the pelvic examination uh, hysterect uh, like uh, hysteroscopy you know and endometrial biopsy so these are the main three tests which are used to uh, diagnose the uh, uterine polyps you know so in case of the ultrasound uh, uh, a cylinder uh, went like device placed in the vagina which emits sound waves and uh, creates the images you know so where you can identify the uh, polyps you know and the hysterectomy in, uh, is uh, uh, you know is a procedure you know uh, your doctor inserts a thin flexible light telescope which is known as histoscope you know uh, through your vagina into cervix into the uterus uh, and uh, to see if there are any polyps there you know and the other one is the endometrial biopsy so if there are any polyps then your doctor will take a specimen of that uh, polyp uh, to see under the microscope are they benign or are they cancerous they are benign or malignant you know cancerous or precancerous or non-cancerous you know so this way your doctor will diagnose uh, uh, the polyps you know now, once diagnosed, then uh, the treatment options are the next question, you know. Now, for the uterine polyps, your doctor may recommend like uh, watch for waiting, uh, medication and uh, uh, like uh, a surgical removal. 
So these are the three kind of the treatments. Now the small polyps without symptoms might resolve on their own and the treatment of the small polyps uh, is unnecessary unless uh, they become a risk, you know, uh, to develop into the cancer cells, you know. And the medication uh, is another treatment option. So the certain hormonal medications including like uh, progestins and the uh, gonadotrophin uh, releasing hormone uh, antagonist, uh, uh, agonist, you know. Uh, may less the symptoms of the polyps uh, but uh, taking such medications is usually uh, a short-term solution you know and the symptoms typically recur once you stop taking those medications and the surgical removal is an other option so during the history is known as uh, hysteroscopy so the instruments inserted through the hysteroscope which is a device your doctor used to see inside your uterus you know so make it possible to remove the polyps and the removed polyps will be likely to send to the lab for the microscopic study under the microscope to see if they are cancerous or non-cancerous you know so these are the treatment options which are available thank you very much for watching this video if you need more information about any disease any medical condition you can visit our website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com and please do not forget to subscribe this channel thank you goodbye